it's a follow-up to something I discussed a while back, but again, there was an update to the case, so I wanted to talk about it. And it has to do with my frustration with the ACLU because I generally like what they do. Why would I not? But on one particular case, it's been very annoying. Basically, if you don't know this already, the ACLU has a long history of defending conservative groups. Yes, conservative groups when it comes to First Amendment issues. So last year, they announced that they were going to file a lawsuit on behalf of the Christian pseudo-historian David Barton and his ministry Wall Builders, which is the group he uses to spread lies about American history. Um, I'm, I'm, I was almost more surprised David Barton accepted that help from the ACLU, but okay. And the ACLU was also working with the right-wing legal group First Liberty Institute. So two groups that have very little overlap, they both joined forces to help David Barton. And that's not the problem I have with this yet. But here's what they were arguing about. Their lawsuit said that wall builders wanted to place ads on buses in Washington, D.C. Uh, for example, I'm going to show you from their lawsuit. This is one of the uh, things they wanted to place as an ad. Christian, that's painting of George Washington right there. Christian, to find out about the faith of our founders, go to wallbuilders.com. There was another one. Uh, same text. This is a painting called The Signing of the Constitution. And again, it's just an advertisement for his stuff saying, you want to know about their faith? Let me tell you all about it. Um, and there were also ads that were just like that. Oh, there's no pictures. Why am I showing you that? There were also those two images without the text, but just the link to wall builders. And what happened is, all of those ads were rejected by the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority. The group that oversees the ads, they said no to all of them. And what they said is, we prohibit advertising intended to influence members of the public regarding, on, regarding an issue on which there are varying public opinions. And they also say, your ads violate our guidelines, which prohibit ads that promote or oppose any religion, religious practice, or belief. So the Metro basically said, you're violating our rules. You can't do this. So the ACLU's argument is that the government has, and that's what the WMATA is, it's a government agency. You have no right to discriminate on the basis of viewpoint or from imposing rules that are not applied consistently. And in their lawsuit, they actually listed a bunch of ads that the organization, the Metro, I will call it, had accepted. Like, there were ones calling for term limits for Supreme Court justices. There were other ones that had to do with public policy matters. They also accepted ads advertising the Book of Mormon musical, which you could argue is semi-religious in nature. But the argument the ACLU was making is if you're allowing those ads then you got to allow David Barton's ads as well. Okay, so the ACLU said, doesn't matter what we think about the ads, you got to allow it because the government has no business deciding which voices ought to be silenced. Okay, so on principle, the ACLU is right. This is not about Barton. This is not about his lies. This is about the selective enforcement of a government agency's rules. Okay. And in 2015, by the way, the reason they even had these rules in place is because in 2015, there was a group trying to put up ads featuring an image of Muhammad, which is forbidden in Islam. And they were trying to figure out a neutral way to say, we cannot have that ad go up. That's why they placed these rules there in the first place. But the fact that some ads in those categories have slipped through uh, suggested that their rules were not being equally enforced. But here's why I bring all this up, because it wasn't about the principle. It wasn't about the lawsuit. It's the way the ACLU described David Barton in their press releases and in their lawsuit. And I'll give you an example of what I mean here. Um, look at this right here. This is from the ACLU of Washington, D.C.'s press release when they announced this lawsuit. 
This lawsuit was filed on behalf of Wall Builder Presentations, or Wall Builders, an organization advocating for Americans to understand their history and the important role religion played in the founding of our nation, which sought to advertise on the side of these buses. No, that is not what the organization does. They don't want Americans understanding their history and the role religion played in the founding of our country. They exist to lie to Americans about our history and pretend that religion played a role in the founding of our nation. Like, I don't mind the ACLU defending David Barton as far as the legal principle goes, but why are they using his propaganda in their press release? That's what I don't understand. And they did this in their lawsuit as well, where they said the plaintiff, Wall Builders, uh, they wanted to advertise on these buses to promote its religious and educational mission, which is to inform the public about the role that the founders' religious faith played in the creation of the nation and the drafting of the Constitution. All of that is BS. No. They per David Barton purposely lies about those elements to trick gullible Christians into falsely thinking we were founded as a Christian nation. He's made a whole career out of distorting the words of the founding fathers and the Bible in defense of Christian nationalism and homophobia and bigotry. And I know a lot of you know this, but he's such a liar when it comes to this stuff that he claimed to have a PhD that he earned. That was a hoax. It was later revealed. He once wrote a book about Thomas Jefferson that was so full of lies that his Christian publishers took, they pulled the book from the shelves because they said, quote, there were historical details, matters of fact, not matters of opinion that were not supported at all. And when a Christian book publisher is like, there are too many lies in this book, we can't sell it. Like, you know, things are bad because their whole business is selling the Bible. So that's how bad David Barton is. And yet, conservative Christians and Republican politicians still cite David Barton as an authoritative source of information because they know the sort of people who take them seriously, they do not care about honesty. Like, these are people who think Trump is telling the truth about everything. They just want someone to say with total confidence whatever they all wish was true. And if it happens to be a white guy who sounds confident, they will believe anything that person says. And so what about those paintings that I mentioned earlier, right? Like even those paintings to an extent are lies. Let me show you this one again. This is that George Washington one. Well, Andrew Seidel, uh, the constitutional scholar who now works with Americans United for Separation of Church and State, he wrote about this painting because what he said is that for, the, for all the paintings ubiquity, there's no historical evidence to support this tale. Because there was a story that the priest Mason Weems designed this story to portray a devout Washington, but historical facts tell us of a different Washington. He was a man of little or no religion with a strong character that, had he been religious, would have prevented showy religious displays. Even if Washington was religious, he was exceedingly private about those beliefs, even in personal letters and papers. So this painting that suggests Washington was praying this way, it is simply not in keeping with Washington's character, right? Like, this is the sort of thing he does over and over and over, uh, the, that uh, David Barton does over and over. Warren Throckmorton just put out a podcast over the past few months called, like, The Jefferson Lies. Uh, he's covered David Barton for years. He couldn't believe the ACLU was doing this either, I think at the time, if I could find this uh, right now, he was shocked that the ACLU was propagating this as well. This is what he wrote at the time. David Barton and Wall Builders obscures and reimagines American history. He doesn't want Americans to understand all their history. Sometimes he leaves out some of the history when he tells it, as when he left out part of the 1782 Virginia law when he wrote about Thomas Jefferson's record on slavery. Sometimes he makes things up. I'm going to scroll down here. Barton will even tell Americans that the Constitution quotes the Bible verbatim. It does not. 
Does someone who does these things really want Americans to understand their history? So if the ACLU must represent misinformation as free speech, then go for it. But must they lie to defend lying? Yeah, that's the point here. Why the hell is the ACLU going out of their way? Uh, and I do have a theory on it. I'll get to it soon. But I, I mean... I think I'll go ahead with that theory now. Why would the ACLU move forward and talk about David Barton's wall builders as if they have a genuine mission to educate the public, which they do not? And the reason is, if you're working with another organization, including wall builders, including First Liberty uh, Institute, if you're working with them on a legal case, you're not all going to send out the same press, uh, different press releases. You're going to work on the same draft, and then all of you are going to submit the same thing. You're all going to get like one quote from one member of your organization in the press release. And I think that's what happened in both the lawsuit and the press release, that they allowed David Barton or his lawyers with First Liberty to dictate how David Barton would be portrayed. And whoever is at the ACLU who signed off on that allowed those lies to stay in place. Like, why couldn't the ACLU say somewhere in there, we don't agree with anything Barton is saying. Barton distorts and twists these, this information all the time. However, it's legal to lie. And just because he's lying doesn't mean the Washington Metro can reject his advertising. I'm not saying they have to use that language, but why couldn't they say something like that? It's because his lawyers at First Liberty wouldn't have wanted that. So the I'm guessing the ACLU just went along with it. But still, why aren't they pushing back in any meaningful way? That's the thing. They're allowing Barton's allies to frame him as a hero by doing this. Like David Barton's going to go give lectures now where he says, even the ACLU says I'm educating Americans about our Christian nation history. Like they're going to use that. That's why they get away with this. Okay, so why do I bring all this up? All this happened a while ago. The reason I bring this up is because uh, recently, now, a U.S. district judge ruled on this case. And what the ruling was is that the Washington Metro has to accept and run Barton's ads. The ACLU won this case, which, by the way, as I said earlier, that's the right ruling. And guess what happened when the ACLU announced this ruling? Look at this. Once again, this is from this week's press release. Uh, about this case. Wall Builders is a Texas-based nonprofit organization that seeks to educate the public about the role the founders' Christian faith played in the creation of the nation and the drafting of the Constitution. No, that's still wrong. Why are you still telling people that? <sighs> Later on in this thing, you have an ACLU rep saying, we're pleased that this ruling moves us a step closer to ending the Metro's arbitrary censorship. In a democracy, the government has no right to pick and choose which viewpoints are acceptable. This case is about expanding everyone's freedom to express their views without unreasonable government interference. You know what? That quotation is fine. No problem with it. What does the First Liberty Senior Council dude say? Rejecting a faith-based advertising banner by labeling it as an issue ad while accepting other ads such as promoting a social justice school on Earth Day is clearly hypocritical, discriminatory, and illegal. I don't, like, you could see the difference in the guy who knows what he's doing and speaks in a professional way and the guy who only speaks grievance and discrimination, a perpetual victim. But again, my problem is this up here. Why is the ACLU promoting David Barton as if he's a legitimate scholar who wants to educate people and not a professional liar who wants to lie to people in order to advance his own agenda? I don't get it. I don't mind the ACLU taking a neutral stance on David Barton's lies as far as the First Amendment goes, but they do not have to hold back on saying it's a lie. I don't know why they haven't figured that out yet. They have smart lawyers there. What the hell are they doing? Now, there are still some issues to be worked out with the Metro's policies regarding religious advertising, but this is a win, not just for the ACLU, it's a win for Barton. And you know what he's going to do with this? Here's my prediction. Barton is going to say with complete sincerity that even the godless liberal ACLU and, the, and a Barack Obama appointed federal judge agree that Wall Builders works to help Americans understand their history. And the thing is, he wouldn't be wrong. 
he would be mischaracterizing their statements, of course, but like, that's what he does. That's the core of his Christian beliefs to lie, right? The core of his lies are always this like nugget of unfortunate truth. And then he spins that into something bigger. So the ACLU, again, they were right in defending him. They were right on the free speech grounds. And they were completely irresponsible when it comes to how they are talking about this in the public. And they did that months ago. And what was so infuriating is that even after they won, they're still doing it. Like, come on, be better than that. All right, I think I'm done. What questions do we got? I always get ads for the ACLU Drag Defense Fund when I'm watching Drag Race. I'm genuinely shocked David would even work with these people. Does he know their past work? I think he does. And I think if I'm David Barton, I would say, sure, I can get conservative lawyers to fight this battle. But if I have my ideological enemies fighting this battle with me, it actually looks good for me. So by all means, if everyone wants to support me on this, I'll take them all. I mean, that's a strategic decision as much as anything else, because it's not like David Barton's going around praising the ACLU for anything. So I understand strategically why all of these groups were willing to work together on this. By the way, that happens at the Supreme Court all the time when it comes to religious freedom cases. You will see uh, atheist groups working with Jewish groups, working with Hindu groups, working with progressive Baptist groups. You know what I mean? And they're saying, we disagree about a lot, but on this issue, we are all on the same page. And if, for what it's worth, if that means anything to you, you should listen to us. So I get the strategy. It's basically the same as conservatives standing behind an unsurpri uh, surprisingly woke piece of work because they made one joke about the left. Yeah, it's kind of like conservatives saying, you know who's who said something really intelligent the other day? Bill Maher. Because Bill Maher is like a Republican who makes woke jokes now because he just flipped over to the other side a long time ago. But yeah, like their conservatives do this thing all the time. They're like, even blank says we're right. And it doesn't matter if they're distorting it or if they're taking something out of context or whatever. They will take victories wherever they can get it. 